Let's imagine for a second you're an airline pilot, a good one, a maverick, and you're about to fly straight into a storm. Now, you could commit to staying calm and keeping your head, relying on your state-of-the-art navigation gear, a solid flight plan, and a Crackerjack co-pilot by your side. You're eyeing that storm, yes, but you're backed up by real-time weather data, altitude adjustments, and steady comms with air traffic. It's daunting for sure, but you've got the tools and the tactics to see you through, and you know it. You're confident, but not cocky. Now imagine you took the kitchen sink approach. It's like you're flying blind. You're ignoring your navigation tools and the flight plan you created. You're flipping switches willy-nilly, bouncing up and down with random altitude changes and wildly tweaking the speed settings, hoping that something, anything, will get you through that storm. It's a frenzied haphazard scramble and you have no clue if you're heading for safety or into the side of a mountain. Now, which approach are you taking with clients? Are you starting with a hypothesis and using your skill set and your team in a methodical way to run experiments and get your client results and navigate any storms along the way, like a true maverick? Or are you throwing the kitchen sink at them, overwhelming them and hoping for the best because you're inherently insecure, like Linus von Pelt? You might want to Google that. Experiments are ideas you can implement that will get you some data and feedback in a short space of time to let you know if you're on track. By the way, designing and building a new website is not an experiment, that's a project. And yes, maybe they do need a new website, but let's run some experiments first, get some results, build some trust, and then they'll do whatever we tell them to because we'll have some runs on the board. When Dropbox started out in 2008, they were spending between $230 and $380 to acquire a new user from ads. It would have taken them four years to break even on each customer, totally unsustainable. So a few things they could have done to try and grow. They could have embraced content marketing and published thought leading content and then shared that content with other blogs. Good idea, right? They could have started a podcast and interviewed entrepreneurs about the challenges of growing a startup in Silicon Valley. They could have started a YouTube channel and gone all in on a video strategy to grow an audience and drive signups. They could have ramped up their social media strategy by publishing engaging content on Facebook and LinkedIn to attract customers. They could have done old school forum marketing by answering questions in forums and using the old LinkedIn bio trick. They could have attended in-person events and meetups and spoken about their cloud storage solution to local startup founders. They could have used a lead magnet to capture leads on their website and then used email marketing to drive people back to sign up. They could have redesigned their logo in an attempt to build more trust with their website visitors. They eventually did that in 2013, by the way. But if they hadn't pivoted their strategy in 2008, they would have run out of money and they wouldn't have made it to 2013. They tried a bunch of these tactics, but nothing was working and all of these strategies would have taken way too long to save the sinking ship. By early 2009, they were hemorrhaging money. So they dug into the data and realized that their best customers were coming from referrals. Hence, the Dropbox referral program was born. This one idea helped Dropbox grow to over 4 million users in 15 months. And 15 years later, it's still one of the things Dropbox does to drive growth. They also now have a podcast called Remotely Curious and a YouTube channel. And they've redesigned their logo four times since. But none of that would have been possible if they hadn't used the data they had on hand to come up with a hypothesis and run an experiment. Okay, for those of you who like a visual, the whole process starts with an idea. In fact, many ideas. And each idea should be expressed as a hypothesis. If we try X based on Y, then we expect Z might happen. Like in the case of Dropbox, they expected they would attract more of their ideal customer if they incentivize their existing customers to refer their friends by giving them some additional storage space. Once you have the ideas, the process then is to test those ideas and get feedback from the marketplace. It's called the feedback loop. And the faster you can iterate through that feedback loop and learn what's working and what's not, the faster you'll find an idea that matches the market. Like in this case, the Dropbox referral program. Once you've found an idea that works, then the process is to scale that idea and actually put some resources behind it, build a team around it, build some processes, put some money behind the idea perhaps. The Dropbox referral partner program today looks very different than it did in 2008. In fact, it's built for businesses to become resellers and bring lots of clients to Dropbox. It didn't start out that way, but it has grown into that because they initially found an idea that worked. Now, I will admit that in between the idea and testing phase, things are very messy. This is a messy process. You are like a scrappy startup and you are hacking your way to relevance. In between testing and scale, this is where things get a little more methodical. Build a team, build some processes, put some structure around it. Your job during the ideation phase is just to think, come up with as many ideas as you possibly can. There's no such thing as a bad idea, just a hypothesis that may or may not work. 
During the testing phase, your job is to learn about those ideas and build some kind of internal knowledge base so that you know what works in the future and what to avoid. And then during the scale phase, your job is to optimize the outcome of that experiment to keep getting great results for your clients. So have a think about whether or not you're suggesting too much too soon to your clients and potentially overwhelming them and yourself or your team. And if there's one thing you can do for your clients to help them get closer to their goals in the next 14 days, and it might be different for each client, leave me a comment below this video and tell me the one thing you currently do in your agency that you think you can package up as an experiment that will get your clients a quick win. And let me know if you've figured out who Linus Von Pelt is. I hope you find this helpful. I'll see you in the next video.